few years back when my uh, when my younger daughter was about 18 years old she uh, had just uh, done an internship uh, summer internship before starting college and uh, she had made about five thousand dollars over the summer three months and uh, I told her listen this five thousand dollars you don't really need it uh, can we open a uh, a Roth IRA account, which is the kind of like a retirement account. Um, it basically the uh, the money in that account stays tax free forever, including all the growth of that account. So you can put about seven thousand dollars a year into an account like that in the U.S. And uh, she said, "Yeah, yeah, no problem." I said, "And is it okay with you?" I said, "If you give me power of attorney to manage that account." She said, "Yeah, sure." So I said, you know, this $5,000, let's say I am able to uh, grow it at 15% a year. So I said that when you are 68 years old, uh, how much would this $5,000 have become? So, you know, this was like two in the morning, you know, I'm driving her back to the airport and she's sleepy and, and uh, she said, I don't know. So I said, well, you know, uh, rule of 72, which is a kind of a shortcut we use uh, with compounding, which is another something you can Google and look up. But basically, if you do 72 divided by 15, it is approximately five. And so a 15% compounded return is going to double every five years. So the $5,000 when she is 23 years old would become 10,000. And then when she is 28 years old, it will become 20,000. And when she's 33 years old, it will become 40,000 and so on. It'll keep doubling every five years. And from 18 to 68 is 50 years. And 50 years, if you chop it up into five year chunks, is 10 doubles. So 10 doubles is two to the power of 10, which is 1,024. And so let's throw away the 24th because we want to do math in our heads. Uh, so uh, $5,000 would become $5 million because we would add three zeros, right? And so I said, well, at 68, you would have $5 million. So now she's wide awake. Okay, how did 5,000 become? Because uh, 5,000 is about, you know, three and a half lakhs, right? And five million is, you know, about 35 crores. Uh, so it's a pretty significant uh, jump from uh, uh, from uh, th three and a half lakhs to 35 crores. Uh, so then I said, but you know, this is $5 million that has come from your earnings just from one summer internship. When you are 19, you may do another internship, you may make another $5,000. And at 68 or 69, that's going to be another 5 million. And at some point you will graduate, maybe at 22. And instead of 5,000, you might be saving 10, 15,000 because your income will be up. And that's going to go through a 40, 50 year compounding. And over time you'll get raises and you'll keep putting this some money away and so on. So I said, what would be the total amount of money you would have if we did this compounding with all your income and everything going through? Uh, how much money would you have at 68? She said, I don't know, it's too big, of a, too big a number. My head will explode. And, and you can see that uh, when, you, when you run the power of compounding, uh, the surprising thing is, why does everyone not end up wealthy? You know, because basically, um, you know, acorns go into, grow into oaks. But the important thing is that you have to spend less than you earn, right? And you have to put the money away and you have to have some uh, reasonable way, like you can buy an index fund or something, some reasonable way to uh, run that money. In the 1950s, uh, Buffett wrote a letter to his investors and he brought up the uh, 
the deal the uh, American Indians in 1626 had done with the Dutch. So in 1626, these Minuit Indians in, in the US owned the island of Manhattan. You know, in New York, the island of Manhattan was owned by the Indians. And the Dutch wanted to buy that island. So they approached the Indians and they were able to come to an agreement to buy the island for $20. And so in 1626, a transaction was done. $20 was given to the Indians and title of that island that we now know as Manhattan passed to the Dutch. And so when people hear that story, they say, oh, the Indians got taken advantage of. You know, this is so much land and so uh, precious and so important. But, you know, the, the thing that Buffett brings up is that let's say the Indians had a trust officer or investment officer who was given this $20 and said, please invest this for the benefit of the tribe. And let's say that that uh, trust officer was not able to get 15% a year. Let's say he's only able to get 7% a year return. So we can again use the rule of 72. And so the money will double every 10 years. Okay. So 1636 will become $40 and 1646 will become $80 and so on. So if you take a hundred year period, it's 10 doubles, same, same thing, like just like we saw before. And 10 doubles we know is 1,000, 1,024. So what happens is the 1626, $20 in 1725 is $20,000. And in 1825, it is $20 million. And in 1925, it's $20 billion. And in 2025, it is $20 trillion. Okay. Now we are not at 2025. So we have to take away like maybe a few years. So you can say that in 2016, it was $10 trillion. You know, there was one more double coming and maybe it's uh, 7%. You'd be maybe at, uh, 12, 13 trillion or something by 2021. So undeveloped land in Manhattan, which was sold in 1626, if it had compounded at 7%, it would be, you know, 12 or 13 trillion dollars. So then the question is, how does that compare to the actual value of that land today? And we don't have an exact idea, but we can make a, a good guess. So if you look at the entire wealth of the United States, you know, all the wealth of every man, woman, and woman and child in the in the US, it is about 125 trillion. You know, all the homes, all the stocks, all the Apple, Google, everything, you include everything, it's about 125 trillion. Okay. Manhattan is just one relatively small city. It's a big city, but uh, you know, it's, it's a very small part of the US. And probably if you did uh, the study of how much land is being sold in Manhattan for, you will come up with a value of a few billion dollars, maybe 50 billion, possibly maybe 100 billion or something. It would not even be like 1% of the 13 trillion, okay? Now, the thing is we can go backwards also. So like 1626, $20. If you go back 100 years, 1526, you would take away three zeros, right? So it's 2000 cents is $20. It would be two cents. Okay, so if the deal had happened 100 years before that, at two cents, you would still have the 13 trillion today. And if you go back another 10 years, you would be down to one cent. Okay, so one cent also becomes. So the thing is that there are, the, this is the magic of compounding. So there are three variables 
that matter in terms of how things compound. So one is the amount of money you start with, right? That's the first variable. The second variable is the compounding rate, 5%, 7%, 15%, et cetera. And the third is the length of the runway, right? How many years do you have, right? So if you have a very long runway, it doesn't matter how much money you start with, and it also doesn't matter how low the compounding rate is. So even with a relatively low compounding rate, and even with a relatively low starting amount, like in our case, one cent, uh, you still end up with a huge number. And so, you know, sometimes Warren Buffett has asked, hey, Mr. Buffett, if a genie came to you and said, Mr. Buffett, you can have any wish you, you want, you know, what would you wish for? So he always says that I would just ask the genie to set it up so that when I die and they look at my corpse, they should say, man, he was old, okay? So the one thing he wants to do is he wants to live for a very long time. And the reason he wants to live for a very long time is not because he's in love with you and me and sharing planet Earth with us. He wants to maximize the length of the runway. 